In essence, it had been no more than a stupid student jape. There had been this perfectly ordinary terraced house in Leeds that happened to have in its front garden an impressive collection of garden gnomes. And for, for some unearthly reason, Ibrahim and his mates had one evening joked about knocking the heads off the gnomes. And then the fantasy had turned into something of a dare. Ibrahim, being the quietest and most introspective of his peer group, became the focus of the stunt. If Ibrahim had the guts and initiative to carry out a clandestine attack on the gnomes, the group would reward him handsomely by clubbing together and presenting him with £350. It wasn't really the money that had appealed to him. It was the seemingly insurmountable challenge the others had set him. After all, nobody ever expected quiet Ibrahim to do anything daring. And if the truth be known, none of his friends seriously expected him to rise to the bait. It was this sudden desire to surprise everyone, including himself, that spurred him on and made him utterly determined to carry out this ludicrous mission and carry it out in style. He would take it upon himself to reshape this miniature sculpture park by physically removing as many bearded heads from their shoulders as he could. He had always been keen on chemistry at school and had remembered a simple experiment that demonstrated the extraordinary explosive force achieved by combining water and dry ice. Under the cover of darkness and armed with a glass bottle of water, a small container of dry ice and an old mallet, Ibrahim made his way to the terraced house with the gnomes. Here he set to work. Two heads were, e heads were easily removed from the shoulders with a deft tap of the mallet, but next would come his pièce de résistance. He pulled on a pair of thick gardening gloves and placed a pair of goggles over his nose. Then he carefully unscrewed the bottle of water and poured in the dry ice, screwed the lid up tight and took cover behind the garden wall. As far, as far as he could remember, the chemical reaction would take in the region of 30 seconds, but that, admittedly, was with a plastic bottle, not a glass one. And he was certain that the outside temperature would also determine the timing of the explosion. Of course, he could have just scarpered there and then, but like all good science students, he wanted to see the result of his experiment. It felt like an eternity, certainly longer than 30 seconds, and he was contemplating what to do if it didn't work when the explosion finally made him jump out of his skin. It had certainly been more powerful than he'd anticipated. Perhaps he'd used too much dry ice, and perhaps the glass bottle had been a mistake. When raising his head above the garden wall, he could now see that his homemade device had left a small crater in the earth, and several gnomes had been seriously damaged. But before he could discern the full extent of his handiwork, a burly, middle-aged man with bulging biceps and tattoos arrived on the scene of carnage. Ibrahim dropped his tools and made for the street, but he didn't get far before being pinned to the pavement and undergoing the humiliation of a citizen's arrest. <laughs>